Hi everyone, back then more YouTube channel. It's Chris back with my rant stroke thought of the day. Just a thought of this one really, and it's all about a transfer story. We've already covered this line on rumour hazards before, but it seems to be growing and growing and there seems to be a feeling that Calvin Phillips is leaning towards a move to Newcastle United in the January transfer window. Now the move itself has been um, muted as a loan to buy deal, which is brilliant for Newcastle United in all fairness, especially given the recent um, you know, Everton situation with breaching FFP. Newcastle could really do with bringing a replacement for Sandro Tonali, more on him in a second, uh, and not spending 50, 60, 70 million quid on that replacement because we need a centre-half and we need a striker as well. So that, to me, this deal would be an absolute no-brainer in all fairness. Calvin Phillips is a brilliant footballer. Uh, terrible move to Manchester City, really, for the player. He's never really kicked the ball. He has missed a few games through injuries as well of late, but I think that's possibly down to the lack of match sharpness, really, and he's got pulls and tears and tweaks and, and everything else as well. But apparently Pep Guardiola, unlike Manchester United, is happy to loan players or sell players to, to what he would deem as a direct rival. So this deal sounds like this really could happen, and, and I'm buzzing for it. I think it'll be a fantastic deal for Newcastle. And going back to some of the, the scepticism, I've seen some stuff going around on social media about, about the player and you know doubting his ability and stuff like that. Forget about Calvin Phillips Manchester City. Go back to the Calvin Phillips at Leeds, the Calvin Phillips under Bielsa, and he was absolutely fucking brilliant as a footballer. In that number six role, in that defensive midfield role, great tackler, uses the ball really well, fit as a fucking fiddle. He barely missed a game for Leeds, I think, when he was playing under Bielsa. Um, and this lad would be a fantastic signing for Newcastle. You get him on the training pitch with Eddie Howe, get his fitness back up to the level that we play at, and it may take time, it may take him four to six months to get that sharpness back. But I think what Calvin Phillips will give us is a defensive midfielder that can sit in front of that back four and stop the creative players for other teams playing, the likes of you know, De Bruyne, Foden, you know, the likes of Fernandez, Eriksen, you know, Madison, these kind of players. If you look back to the Liverpool game that we lost, it was because we were missing a player like that when we went, up, when we went one in front that we allowed Liverpool to get back into the game, the likes of Sobert Sly and players like that, finding those little pockets of space. A player like Phillips can sit in front of that back four and can, can protect number one. But number two, and this is me going back to the, the summer transfer signing of Sandro Tonali. Now, people have said this and they got shot down and pulled to pieces for it. But I think there's more and more people now really looking at this with, with a broader spectrum, I think. Now, we signed Sandro Tonali in the summer. We were all buzzing, me included, you know, Italian international Milan captain, the next Pearl of all this kind of stuff. And we thought he was coming to be a defensive midfielder to allow Bruno to go 10, 15 yards further up the park and to allow Joe Linton to be that box-to-box, -box, back and forth player who didn't have to defend so much. You know, he could be more of an attacking threat at the other end of the pitch. Sandro Tonali did not end up being that player. So he came in and he was kind of stepping on Bruno's toes a little bit, getting in the same position. I don't really feel like they clicked as a midfield pair. Uh, obviously, Joe Linton got his injuries as well, so that didn't help. I don't think they clicked as a midfield pair bar the Villa game where they looked sensational in that, in that game. Maybe that was Villa having an off day as well as us playing really well. But Sandro Tonali did not really look like he was the answer to that missing piece of the puzzle that was the number six. I really feel that's the player that we should have signed. Now, obviously, everything else had kicked off off the back of Sandro, you know, with the, the betting scandal and all that. And, and before anyone comes to me in the comments, yes, I feel bad for the lad. He's got an addiction and everything else. But it doesn't change the fact that the kid is missing for 10 months and he's He's let himself down and he's let his, his, his new club down and everything else as well. That That is factual. He knew this could happen in the background when he signed. What, what Milan knew or not, I've got my views on that. I think Milan definitely knew and I think that's why they sold us a player that probably could have got 100 plus million for for half that price. And I think that's the reason this deal went through with Newcastle United. But going back to the main point, people doubt Calvin Phillips coming to Newcastle. Just like I say, look at the player, look at the attributes and look what he could do to the side. I think with Calvin Phillips, unlike Tenali, I think we would see the best of Bruno because I think Calvin Phillips would sit into that hole behind the, the midfield and just in front of the back four. He would cover that area, cover them runners, cover those through balls, and he's got a great range of passing from two. He can start moves from there. It would allow Bruno to move 15, 20 yards further up the park. I think we'd see a lot more of Bruno's attacking prowess. That was so previously, you know, think of the goals against Leicester, Arsenal, Bournemouth, you know, when, when Bruno was able to get fit up the park and become part of that attacking six, if you were, rather than defending so much. And, and Bruno was sensational in that area. And Bruno really is the fulcrum that we're building this side around. He really is the spine of this team, you know, with Pope, Botman, 
Bruno and Isaac really is, is, is the kind of spine that will probably be around for two, three, four years potentially. So we need to get a player that can get the best out of Bruno. That was not Sandro Tonali, that was Calvin Phillips. And you know, I know Mark mentioned it on, on what's going on. I know that the fans want to support Tonali and everything else, but singing for a lad who can't play for 10 months versus lads on the pitch just doesn't really wash with me. You know, the kid is gone. Forget about him. Forget about the chant. Forget about him as a player. I actually don't think he'll ever play for Newcastle again. I've said that before and I'll say it again. <clears throat> I think he'll come back and he'll go out on loan to Serie A and that'll be the last we'll see of him and he'll you'll end up getting sold there a bit like Lukaku as well. I'd love to be proven wrong, but I just don't think Sandro Tonali is going to have a Newcastle United future. But Calvin Phillips, on the other hand, I think will definitely have a future and a present if he signs in January. I think it's a great bit of business. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Would you be happy with Calvin Phillips at the football club? I think it's a no-brainer, especially if it's loan to buy, because we need three players and FFP is definitely watching everybody. So let's hope we can get that deal done and get it done early. Let us know what you guys think about that. If you can like and subscribe, we really appreciate it. We're close to 6K. You might help push us over. Uh, be a member if you want to. There's an option there too, one ninety nine. Give a little bit back to the channel. Help us bring you this great content. Have a great day, whatever you're doing, everybody. Roll on the January sales. See you later.